Hello everyone, uh, I'm going to be going over a couple MATLAB concepts to help you out with the extra credit assignment. So I think the first thing I'll go over is how to import data from uh, MATLAB or from, ex from the Excel file that you're given into MATLAB. So the command that we use is called xlsread, but we need to give it a file name, right? Um, so we need to kind of choose the file, basically, that we want to import. So the way I suggest doing that is by using this function uigetfile, right, and give it two outputs, output variables, and just, you can just call them a and b. So you type this in, click enter, and then bring up a box that will allow you to choose the file that you want to import into MATLAB. So mine saved in Dropbox. And make sure you choose all files down here and select the Excel file. So now it's given us the path to the file and then the final file name. And we just need to mush those together. So we'll say file name equals bracket B comma A. And there you go. So that's the entire file path, including the file name. And we can use that as an input for our XLS read function that will import the data from Excel. So you want to have three outputs, and it will be num, text, and raw. So num will be the variable that gives you all the numeric information from your Excel file. Text is all the text information, and then raw is everything all combined. And the function is XLS read, and we'll just put file name, and then we need to list the sheet number that we want to import. So we have three sheets in the Excel file. One is for marker positions, the other one is for ground reaction forces, and the last one is for center of pressure um, coordinates. So let's just start with center of pressure. So we'll start with sheet three. And there we go. So if we look at our num variable, it's only the numbers in, in that sheet. The raw variable has everything and the text variable just has the text which is just the headers at the top of the Excel sheet. So we only really need the uh, numeric information so let's just keep that and let's call it sheet 3 equals num. So we'll save that, save all the numeric information to sheet 3. Um, then we're going to do the same thing except we're going to import sheet 2 and again we'll just save the numeric information from sheet 2. And then we'll do sheet 1 and save the numeric information from sheet 1. Okay, so now that you have that, you will probably want to just choose the specific um, data that you're interested in, right? So we don't need all the information about all the markers in the Excel sheet. So if we go to the Excel file, or first actually, if we go to our marker placement guide. Let's go to the dynamic guide and we'll probably want to, or we're probably interested in a marker at the ankle, right? And we're interested in the right ankle, that's what's in the problem description, right? Um, from right heel strike to subsequent right heel strike. So we're looking at the right ankle, um, so we'll be looking for a marker that's on the right ankle, so that's marker 12 and that's called right lateral ankle. So in the Excel sheet, that one, that um, is RLAN, right? Right lateral ankle. And those are these three columns. So actually it's probably better if we look at it in the, in the MATLAB um, raw variable, right? If we look through those, RLAN, Here we go. So it's column 95, 96, and 97. So those are the columns that will give us the position information that we're interested in. So what I suggest doing is um, making a RLAN X variable, which has all the um, X coordinate information for the RLAN marker, and calling it, um, or make, setting it equal to sheet 1 we want all the rows, but we only want the information from the 95th column. And then you can do the same thing for the Y data, but for from the 96th column, and 
then you can do the same thing for the Z data, which is in the 97th column. Um, and then we need the information from the uh, force plate. So if we look at the ground reaction forces, force plate 2 has the, is the force plate we're interested in because we're interested in the, in the right side. Um, so this is the 4th, 5th, and 6th column of our sheet 2 data. So, um, so we can say grfx equals sheet 2. And again, that's the 5th, 6th, and 7th column. So we want all the rows from the 5th column. That's our x. The 6th column will give us the y data. And the 7th column will give us our z data. And then same thing for center of pressure. That's from sheet 3. But it's the same format as the ground reaction force data. So we want the 5th, 6th, and 7th column from that sheet. OK, so now we have all our data. Um, now it's just a matter of kind of putting it in a form that's usable for us to solve the problem. So I can close this down here, make this a little bigger. Um, so the next kind of tricky thing, and probably the last thing I'll go over in this video because I think everything else should go pretty easily from here, is that the force plate data is captured at 2100 hertz, but the marker position data is captured at 60 hertz. So you're, you have a lot more data points for your force plate uh, data than for your marker data. And you can see that if you look at the length of the matrices for our variables, right? So our marker data only has 326 data points, but our force plate data has 11,368. So, um, so we need to choose the data points from the ground from the force plate and from the markers that match up to the same moment in time. So basically what you can do is say that the um, the force plate data was captured at 2100 hertz and the marker data was captured at 60 hertz. So if you take the the ratio of that you get 35. So basically what that means is every 35th uh, force plate data point corresponds to the the like next ground reaction force data point, right? So um, if we look at um, so if we look at the times, so let's define times for our data, right? So um, force plate time data is going to go from 1 over 2100, right? The first, um, the first data point will be captured at 1 over 2100 seconds. And it's going to go in increments of 1 over 2100 all the way up to the final data point, which is, um, so we have 11,368 divided by 2100. And so, This is how that variable looks down here. Um, let's flip it so that it's one column instead of one row. OK. So our last data point was captured at 5.4133 seconds. And then if we do the same thing for our marker time, right? this one was captured at 60 hertz. So we do 1 over 60 instead of 1 over 2100. And we have 326 data points for the marker data. And then again, let's flip it so it's a column instead of a row. Now if we look at our marker time, we have 5.43333. So force plate time and marker time endpoints are pretty close, but they're not exactly the same. And you can see that there's a lot more 
um, data in between each second for the force plate than for the marker time, right? So we basically just need to match these times up. And um, again, we got our ratio of 35, right? So every 35th uh, data point in for the force plate information will correspond to the next data point in um, the marker time, right? So if we look at um, our first marker time data point is 0 0.0167 seconds. So for force plate time, the 35th uh, data point should be 0 0.0167 seconds. And it is. So for all our force plate data, all we really need is every 35th data point. And so the way you can do that is by taking, so let's say like ground reaction force X, and let's call it truncated, right, trunk, or truncated, because um, we're going to exclude a lot of the data points that don't match up with our marker times. So to do that, what we're going to say grfx trunk is equal to our original grfx, and it's going to go from um, 35 in increments of 35 all the way to the end of the, the vector. And there we go. And now we have a much shorter grfx um, data set that'll, that'll line up nicely with our um, marker data set. So you're going to want to do this for the y position and the z, or sorry, the z force, not position. And then you'll want to do this for your center of pressure. And it's the same thing. And then for your um, marker position stuff, you will have to take off the last couple data points, right? Because our marker data ends at 5.4333 seconds, but our force plate data ends a little bit before that at 5.4133, right? So we're going to lose our last couple um, marker position data points just to make sure that we, only, we have the same number of data points for marker position and the force plate data. So if we look at how long our GRFY trunk and X and Z, the, all the truncated data only has 324 data points, but our marker position stuff has 326. So we just need to go, we just need to use the first 324 data points. And same thing for the Y and Z. Okay. Um, so, yeah, now you have pretty much the final, like, usable form of, of all the information that you need, right? So you have ground reaction force in X, Y, and Z, uh, center pressure in X, Y, and Z, and marker position in X, Y, and Z um, for the relevant marker, and the data sets will match up. So you can do your analysis from here. Um, if you want to put them all into one big matrix, you can. Um, so we can say that like all data equals, um, we can do, let's see, how do we want to do this? Let's say marker time, so we can have some, so we can have our time data, and we need to truncate that because we didn't before. And then we can have um, our marker information. And 
then let's have our ground reaction force. And then our center of pressure. And hopefully I didn't make any typos. And now if we look at our all data matrix, we have it all in one spot. And all the columns are the same length and everything lines up the way it's supposed to. And it's all good. And then if you want, you can export this to Excel. So the function for that is XLS write. And basically, all you do is say XLS write, and let's call it, we have to give it a file name, so let's call it extra credit data. And then all data is the matrix that we want to import into Excel. And click enter. And there you go, it was written right into the directory that, that I've been working from. So if we double click on this, oops, let's not do it from there. Let's go into, how do I get here? Um, is it here, MATLAB? extra credit data. There we go. And so now we can just edit everything in Excel. And if you come in here, you can say, this is our time in seconds. This is our right lateral ankle X, Y, Z. This is our ground reaction force X, Y, Z and center of pressure X, Y, Z. And from there, you should be able to do the rest of the um, do the rest of the assignment much more um, straightforwardly. I think that that's pretty much all the MATLAB that you should need, and I think you can do the rest from there. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about anything else, let me know. Send me an email. Um, otherwise, I, I think from here you should be pretty good to go. So I hope this helped. If it didn't or if you have any other questions, again, send me an email. Leave a comment on the video. Um, or I'll, I'll see you in class on Monday. So yeah, good luck with the rest of the extra credit. And I hope this helped. See you later.